the Groundwater Project, an evolving platform for learning and practice. There's some feedback here. I wonder if you could turn off some of the mics. mics. So the aim of this uh, project is to uh, produce uh, on the web all the appropriate materials for all aspects of groundwater science that are scientifically significant and or societally relevant to our needs in this modern world. So the grand purpose is to deliver an online assemblage of learning materials related to groundwater science and engineering to support student learning, but much more beyond that to support professionals in groundwater science and engineering, specialists in other disciplines, and to help educate managers and regulators so that we can have more science-based decision-making. So the impetus for this groundwater project is this textbook. Reason Cherry Groundwater, published by Prentice Hall in 1979. This book remained in print uh, internationally until 2016. And over the decades after it came out in 1979, we had many requests for this book to be updated or revised. We didn't do this um, until now, in a much different way. Later on, I'll explain why we didn't attempt to revise it years ago. So what is the Groundwater Project? The Groundwater Project has uh, two parts. Groundwater eBook, which is an electronic textbook, and educational supplements, case studies, videos, laboratory demonstrations, etc. Right at the moment, we're focusing mostly on the eBook. So why is the Groundwater Project urgent? There's a global water crisis getting worse as the population of the globe expands from 7.5 billion to 10 billion in the next two or three decades. We need better protection and management of groundwater based on up-to-date science understanding. And the project is urgent also because today's senior generation of experts on groundwater is now available to help, but uh, maybe not so much longer. So a major goal is to capture the knowledge of today's senior generation of groundwater experts that they created through decades of research and uh, practice. The book has 22 sections, each section with five to 20 chapters. So some sections will in essence be a textbook in their own right on the section topic. There are more than 200 co-authors involved from 12 countries on five continents. So we want this endeavor to be a very international uh, project. So I'm the project leader, but I'm getting major assistance um, on an everyday basis from Doug McKay, uh, Professor Emeritus at the University of California, Davis. Steve Moran, who's worked on groundwater and government agencies in Canada and U.S. Everton, Dalavira, Brazil, of course. Beth Parker from the University of Guelph. And Warren Wood, retired from the U.S. Geological Survey. But in the bigger picture, there's a steering committee uh, with people from seven countries, influential people who know a lot. I won't dwell on them here, but this is our way of making sure that we have an international perspective. So where are the participants located? They're all over the globe. People all over the globe are preparing material for this ebook and project. Five continents, 12 countries, more than 50 organizations, including universities from all over the place. And the involvement goes beyond North America, Europe, other countries. Um, the uh, organization certainly is closed, as I'll mention a little bit. We're still seeking involvement and advice and contributions from wherever. So it's an evolving project. So the groundwater ebook will cover to topics in different knowledge states, and it will cover 
old, what we refer to as old mature science, science that's already been synthesized, to cover maturing science, which is a lot of information and data that still needs synthesis. It'll cover emerging science, science that's rapidly evolving. We'll get people who are very up on topics that are quickly changing. And we even will include some speculative science, like experts that know about topics that are just emerging in their importance. And the beauty of it being an electronic book is that we can revise things as we go. Some chapters may revise revised every two years, and other chapters may be revised after even half a year or so. Now, has anyone previously done such an ebook? Uh, we started our, our this project without knowing anyone who had actually done such an ebook project before. But then a year ago or so, we discovered that in fact is a project like this, but a bit smaller, uh, that's nearing completion. An old textbook uh, has been updated health aspects of excreta and wastewater management. Uh, the budget for this is half a million dollars. It has about 40 chapters, and about 60 or 70 authors. So they're an example of a group that uh, is getting things online, free of charge, globally available, uh, etc. But ours is bigger and different and more ambitious, and I'll tell you more about here as we go along. So the goal of all of this is to help people interested in groundwater at a point of uh, better understanding. Um, students, professionals, professors, all of us who are seeking understanding. Self, I'm still seeking understanding. But a lot of things that I should understand that I don't yet understand. So to get to understanding, we need information. We need information to be synthesized. It turns into knowledge, and eventually, if all goes well, all of this leads to uh, us being able to claim that we understand things in a useful way. So the objective is to get all this information available electronically, only electronically, available from a web platform free of charge that Everton's developing. Uh, and in addition, we want uh, translations into these languages and maybe maybe others fairly quickly. This can be done by crowdsourcing, etc., which I'll mention a little bit more as we go along. And some of you have already been involved uh, in the first uh, trial uh, of this. Now, the first stage of the Brownwater Project was to issue the 1979 book online, to get it uh, turned into Word from its old uh, written text and to produce uh, translations um, of the old book uh, online. This then serves to kind of test and improve the ebook processes. So the Portuguese translation is uh, one that was done the most quickly and the most successfully according to a procedure that Everton uh, developed. And, and much to my amazement, uh, things happen really quickly at a high quality. So I'm very grateful that Brazil has brought this innovation to the ebook project, proving that in fact it can be done. So, uh, as I understand the situation, chapter eight is being issued now, and it's a very important chapter in the whole Freeze and Cherry book covering groundwater resource evaluation. The old book had uh, has uh, 600 pages, and the ebook will have uh, probably when it's all done maybe uh, 6,000 pages. A topic like groundwater resource evaluation will be will be covered in a relatively simple way, and then a variety of other ways so that it's fully encompassed in the ebook of the future. Uh, so that's an introduction to the ebook and the groundwater project as we see it. it as I mentioned, it's very much an evolving uh, adventure. And now I'll kind of tell you the story of the Freeze and Cherry book. It will be of interest to some of you. And it's the story of how we actually got to the ebook project. So this story starts uh, way back. Uh, it all started in 1962. When I arrived as a 21 year old at the University of California, Berkeley, uh, to do a master's degree in groundwater and geotechnical engineering. 
And I arrived there in the fall of 72, of 1962, and at that time I met Alan Fries. Alan Fries arrived also from Canada, also having just graduated, also planning to study groundwater at the University of California, Berkeley. We didn't know one another, he just arrived there and found out that we had a very similar background in education, in geological engineering, and we both liked to play hockey. So that was where I met Al Fries, and I stayed at Berkeley for a year and a half. And I went to the University of Illinois, where they were building a large groundwater teaching organization. And I went to France for a year to study groundwater chemistry. And then I arrived back in Canada, at the University of Manitoba, as Canada's first uh, groundwater hydrogeology professor. Um, and when I arrived back and I began to teach in 1967, and Al Fries arrived back in the United States a few years later, he had gone to IBM to run groundwater software that he developed on huge computers at the time. He arrived at UBC and I arrived in Manitoba and he had the job of teaching hydrogeology. We both found that the textbooks available to assign to students were very much out of date. The most recent textbook was produced in 1966 by Stanley Davis and uh, DeWeest, a very good book in this era. It was a good book for what it covered, but it didn't cover all that much of what was the new science since that time. So Al and I uh, then were both preparing a textbook ourselves. And then in 1975, we headed a Geological Society of America conference in the United States. We were going to lunch together and I asked him what he was doing and he asked me what I was doing. We both discovered that we were both writing a textbook. Amazing. So we discussed then about putting our efforts together into one book. We agreed then that he would cover all the physical hydrogeology and I would cover all of the sorry chemical. It was our decision at that time that this book should be about 50 50 physical and chemical. All the previous books of the time, basically the physical, were no groundwater contamination, groundwater geochemistry, etc. So this decision to make it a 50 50 book was kind of a landmark, as it turns out, it was the right decision. Uh, and then we got going, and he would review my chapters, since he knew nothing about groundwater geochemistry, etc. I would re review his, about which he knew a lot more than me. And we ended up producing a book of 600 pages with 11 chapters, it covered just about everything that one could cover uh, at that time. The book was written between 1975 and 1978 and then published in 79. So when it appeared, it was viewed as a, um, a landmark in that it introduced the world to a, a broad perspective on groundwater science at the time. And I, I was had the job, as I mentioned, of writing everything to do with groundwater geochemistry, but in fact, Throughout my entire education, my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in geological engineering, my PhD in earth sciences, I learned almost nothing about groundwater contamination or groundwater geochemistry. So everything that's included in this book on those topics uh, was written by me and it's written based on me attempting to educate myself on these topics. Um, this caused me quite a bit of uh, stress because I really didn't know what I was doing when I started out. And I remember feeling anxious, if not worried, when this textbook was just about to come out. So I was worried about being exposed as kind of an intellectual fraud, in that I'd written a textbook on things that I taught myself in the last uh, decade. Um, and some of the things that I taught myself that I then wrote down to educate students, I wasn't quite sure if I really understood it fully. But as it turns out, uh, this book the world was received very favorably, so I escaped without without embarrassment. But it just goes to show that self-education can be a good process. It just goes to show that, that uh, nearly all of us can be anxious about what we think we know and maybe what we don't really know well enough. But it can be good to uh, forge ahead uh, anyway. Um, so this book got going and it made Al Fries and I are very famous on the international stage. Even to this day, when I travel, people ask me to sign this book. 
uh, and they ask me all sorts of questions, thinking that I know a lot about groundwork science. And in 1979, I knew quite a bit about groundwater science. That's because there wasn't much to know. Now, groundwater science is a huge uh, arena of information on all sorts of topics. Some people like me that still are experts in a narrow niche of not, uh, I think, claim all that much about the bigger picture. So, over the years, people asked us to revise the Freeze and Jerry book. And after a decade or so, we gave up the ambitions on that front because we realized that we didn't know enough to revise it well enough. So the publisher would say, well, add a younger scientist or two. We even realized as the years went by that, that even that wouldn't allow us to write a textbook to be broad in coverage. It would be, would be based on um, people who really know stuff. That, read, that led to the proposal of one of my former students now uh, at the University of Calgary, Dr. Catherine Ryan, who said, John, why don't we do an e-book? So we got the publication rights back from the publisher as a philanthropical gift and we set forth to try and organize something that would involve many publishers. We decided not to do a sort of a bookie book with people just submitting material from all over the globe. We decided to, uh, to do a very organized process whereby myself and my colleagues would figure out what we want to have in the book. Then we'd invite experts and see if you could persuade them then to contribute. And, and we found that we could uh, persuade uh, very excellent people across the globe to contribute. Mostly at this time, those who are retired, who are emeritus like myself, or who are near retirement. As time goes on, we will invite and manage to persuade, I hope, the younger scientists to contribute. We right at the moment can rely on the older generation uh, to uh, do the hard work so that we can start getting chapters out uh, and that we want to do this then by this older generation. By that I mean people in their 60s to their early 80s. We want to capture their knowledge as best we can so that it's captured. In many cases, the knowledge that these older people have is not knowledge that exists anywhere else as so science evolves and changes, etc. So that's what we've done. And we uh, hope to be issuing on the uh, web platform that we return. Is designing and managing uh, a dozen chapters uh, from the new ebook uh, in early 2019. And then the goal is to have these chapters translated into several languages as quickly as possible. And that's where Everton's uh, process of crowdsourcing and translation will now come into uh, urgent need again. And uh, I'm sure that some of you will once again be asked to uh, contribute. Um, so, I guess what I've concluded then is that since the original book was published, groundwater science has flourished across the globe. Uh, groundwater has become increasingly important in many countries. It's actually is the most important water issue of all. Uh, and hopefully, this ebook then will have enough knowledge and understanding in it so that uh, groundwater learning and groundwater science will be entirely democratic so people can download it anywhere. Not only will they be able to, to download it anywhere, but we're hoping to develop all sorts of education supplements to help learning. And not only that, we the whole process will be open for feedback, advice, uh, and corrections. So I think with that, we may have covered what I should chat about here. Um, so I thank you for your attention and, uh, and look forward to uh, meeting some of you in the future when I'm in Brazil next, next spring. And for those of you that have already helped 